Welcome to the story of the Element Girl Arsenic from the Magical Periodic Table and the Element Girl series, Book 5. In this story, you will meet Arsenic from Family 15 or Nitrogen Family with atomic number 33. Sometime around 5 o'clock one Saturday evening, my friend Endo texted me asking me about whether we could visit Arsenic. She added, you see, I've been reading this Agatha Christie mystery book and the villain uses arsenic on his victims. Scary stuff. I heard Endo's twin sister, Exo, in the background cry out, if you guys are visiting arsenic, I am in. We texted the rest of our friends. Isaac replied eagerly, when are we leaving? An hour later, the four of us met at Exo and Endo's backyard. I put up the periodic table on a large easel. We chatted excitedly about how arsenic would look and whether she would be as evil as we had read about in mystery novels. Feeling nervous about meeting arsenic, we pushed on the symbol AS. The late evening sky and green trees whirled around us. But soon all was still and we were in a place where everything seemed eerie and ominous. We were standing outside a huge landfill and a sign said in bold letters, hazardous waste. Several sets of safety gear were sitting on a large stone under the sign. The magical periodic table always provided us with the personal protective equipment before we ventured into any unsafe situations, I thought gratefully. We put on the protective gear and gained confidence to meet Arsenic. A figure with long flyaway green hair wearing a robe that was dragging behind her was standing away from us on a path outside of the landfill and she was watching us. She had a skull that emitted red laser beams. The evening dusk made the figure look even scarier than I had imagined. That must be arsenic, muttered Endo. I wondered why we had chosen the late evening time to visit arsenic. The figure abruptly turned around and started walking away. We walked behind the figure at a safe distance. Suddenly, she paused for a moment and said harshly in a grating voice without turning, why are you here? What do you want? There were no welcome greetings, no introductions. Endo cleared her throat and replied politely. Sorry to bother you, but we are here to learn about arsenic. You are arsenic, aren't you? To this, the figure turned around. She was arsenic, all right, for she had a sash that said so. The sash held the laser beam emitting skull. Her eyes were shockingly red and she had a short reddish blouse a skirt that emitted hues of yellow, red, blue, green, gray, and black. Her long robe of mostly red and yellow swished about her as she moved. The colors on her outfit and hair looked awesome, I should say. However, what was grotesque was that she had two dead mice in one hand and a dead giant shrimp in the other hand. As she stood glaring at us, her super long reddish black nails trailed the mice. I shuddered and edged closer to my friends. I could see that they were frightened as well. Arsenic noticed our shudder and smiled cruelly with her eyes gleaming. Without replying to Endo, Arsenic screeched, pestering humans. Anyway, since a periodic table sent you here, I will take some questions from you. Then she started walking towards a neighboring street where a sign said Kettleman City. Endo quietly told us with excitement in her eyes, Oh, we passed through this place when we went to Los Angeles last year. Then Exo echoed loudly. Yeah, and that told us about some water contamination in this area that is affecting the health of people who live here. Something about arsenic in the groundwater, totally gruesome. Arsenic stopped and stared at Exo, then grunted in her steely voice. You seem to be a know-it-all. Are you here to incriminate me? Isaac was about to erupt at arsenic in support of Exo. I nudged him and whispered to all, we are here to learn about arsenic. Let us do just that and get out. They all nodded in agreement. Trying to keep pace with arsenic and gathering courage, I asked, can you please explain how arsenic gets into groundwater here? Arsenic shrugged and replied, Pesticide containing arsenic was used in the agricultural lands in the past. This arsenic gets into the groundwater. 
Use of arsenic in agricultural lands was banned in the 1980s. Also, arsenic is in hazardous waste. Endo inquired politely. Kettleman City is in the Central Valley, which is an agricultural area, right? Also, where else is arsenic present? Arsenic responded, yes. I am in rocks that contain copper and lead. When the copper and lead ores are processed, I get into the air. I was glad that she was answering our questions. For some time, we continued walking quietly behind her on a deserted street outside of the waste dump with our eyes fixed on arsenic and the scum. Then Exo broke the silence and inquired, my sister and I have read stories about garlic odor and arsenic. We cannot smell anything now because of the protective masks. Do you have a garlic odor? Arsenic whirled about, swinging the rats and the shrimp, swelled up her chest and replied arrogantly, I am famous, aren't I? You read about me in stories. Mystery writers are obsessed with me. Even though the discovery of arsenic is attributed to Albertus Magnus, a German friar, philosopher and scientist in the 1200s, I was known even to ancient civilizations. She swayed her green hair and laughed. Her laughter seemed more sinister than her scowl. More like notorious, I heard Exo whisper. Arsenic did not hear that because she was way ahead of us. Arsenic turned around to face us and responded to Exo's question about the garlic order. When arsenic reacts with an acid, arsine gas, ASH3, is formed. It has an unpleasant garlicky or fishy smell. It is highly toxic upon inhalation. Ha ha ha. Ignoring arsenic's sarcastic laughter, Isaac busily jotted down everything in his notes. Then suddenly, arsenic paused in her walk and said, I'm highly toxic and I do not deny it. But people who use me to hurt others are the most toxic. I reflected on that. Arsenic was totally right. From the expression on their faces, I could see that my friends were thinking the same thing. We looked at each other thoughtfully and nodded in agreement. Isaac said aloud, You are absolutely right. Sorry that we did not think of it that way first. Then Endo joined in. Every element has unique properties. What application people use an element for does matter. Thanks for bringing our attention to that. Exo and I agreed as well. Arsenic gave us a sideways glance and said, Now that we are all on the same page, keep walking and you are allowed to ask more questions. I mused that if any of us had disagreed with her, our meeting could have been cut short. Then Arsenic turned to a quiet street near the waste dump and said, There was an incident in the 1800s in the United Kingdom where some people got killed and many injured from accidental arsenic poisoning. Because of the high sugar prices in those days, bakers used a sugar substitute, which was a non-toxic, cheap, low-quality mixture of various things. However, a baker was supplied arsenic trioxide, AS2O3, by a pharmacist instead of the sugar substitute by mistake, since both the products were white crystalline powders. Many people died and many were injured. If you want to know more, research about the 1858 Bradford poisoning. Alarmed by the story, I asked Arsenic, what happened after this incident? Did the government take any action to protect people? Arsenic grunted in assent, yes. The sale of the home concocted sugar substitute and other products that adulterate food was banned. Also, they introduced stringent measures in the handling of poisonous substances. Sugar became cheaper later on when the sugar tax was abolished. I sighed and responded, thank goodness. A dry breeze was blowing and Arsenic's green hair was blowing wildly. Pointing to her hair, Indo inquired, can you please tell us about the green in your hair and the other colors in your outfit? By the way, the colors are gorgeous. Arsenic glanced briefly at Endo and there was the hint of a faint smile on her lips. Even with the smile, somehow she looked frightening. Arsenic replied, Well, do you know how I got my name? We shook our heads. Arsenic continued, Arsenic sulfide, AS2S3, 
resembles gold with its golden yellow color, which the Persians called Zarnik. Then the Greeks gave the name Arsenikos, meaning potent. So that describes the bright yellow color. Another arsenic mineral is Realgar AS4S4, which has a beautiful ruby red color and is nicknamed Ruby Arsenic. That explains the red in my costume. My flame test color is blue, so you see hints of blue here and there. She paused, looked around gravely and continued. Well, the story behind the green color is rather long. A compound of arsenic with copper, which has a green color, was used in ladies' dresses, shoes, menswear, toys, and even wallpaper in the Victorian era. People who used these products inhaled the toxic arsenic vapors, which caused serious harm to their health. There is belief that Napoleon's death may have been caused by the arsenic vapor from the green wallpaper in his room while he was in exile in St. Helena Island. Arsenic continued, well, you will be shocked to hear that arsenic was even used as part of a hair removal cream mixture by women in the Victorian times. Anyway, to wrap up the stories of the colors you see on me, my three allotropic forms are yellow, black, and gray. Yellow is the most unstable and most toxic. Black has an amorphous structure and gray is the most stable one. Exo exclaimed, wow, that is so interesting, particularly the green color story. I wonder if people were aware of the dangers and still use them? Arsenic did not reply. She looked at Exo with her eyebrows raised, as if saying, of course they did, and they still used it. The sky had turned a deep gray, and the breeze had picked up, and it was getting a bit chilly. I asked hastily, one more question, please. You carry the dead mice because arsenic was used until some time ago in rat poison. But what about the shrimp? Arsenic stopped and looked down at the large shrimp in her hand. Then she replied, Seafood contains arsenobetaine, which is an organic form of arsenic and it is non-toxic. Isaac responded, That is a relief for people who consume seafood. Arsenic picked up her speed and started heading towards the entrance to the hazardous waste dump with the red beam from the skull she was wearing glittering. Then Isaac spoke up. Oh, is the skull emitting a red laser beam? Arsenic nodded. Yes, it is gallium arsenide, G-A-A-S. I am a metalloid and used in the semiconductor industry. Her answer was brief and seemed like she was done answering our questions. Also, it was time for us to return. Endo said, thank you, Arsenic, for answering all our questions. We appreciate your time. We all said, thank you, Arsenic. But Arsenic did not look back at us. It was quite dark by then. All we could see was a dark figure with a red glittering skull entering the waste dump. My friends and I put away all the safety gear and got ready to return. A moment later, we were standing in Exo and Endo's backyard. It was almost nine o'clock and we were quite hungry. Exo and Endo's mom gave us all a large bowl of minestrone soup and chewy garlic bread. Between spoonfuls of the soup, we discussed our adventure meeting arsenic. Soon, Isaac and I left on our bikes back to our own homes. As I narrated the arsenic story to my family, my pet dog Electron sat on the floor near me with her head tilted to one side and ears pricked up as if she understood every word I was saying. Hearing the story about arsenic trioxide in baked goods, Electron growled. Mom and Dad shook their heads in disbelief. After a cup of calming chamomile tea, I retired for the day, hoping that I would not get nightmares about glowing skulls and arsenic chasing me around a hazardous waste dump. Thank you for listening to the story of the Element Girl Arsenic.